Hey, good afternoon, everyone. This is Jake here at eh, whatever, where we literally talk about whatever. Today, it's an important topic. Uh, if you're coming from uh, Facebook or Instagram, then you realize the importance of it. I'm very passionate about this because I've been taking the necessary steps to be the best version of myself that I can be. And I'd like to just share that journey with y'all and give, you know, anybody, any man or woman, like maybe if you're a woman and your guy's going through it, right, you can see it. Uh, he's, he's, he's clammed up. He's, he's kept to himself. Uh, right. And you can, you can see it. You love him to death. Right. But he's not talking. Right. So, uh, that's one thing. And guys, if this kind of resonates with you and you're just kind of looking for any sort of resources, right. Or just somebody to talk to, you know, I'm going through it myself. I'm taking the steps and, uh, part of its communication, this is part of communication is getting the information out there, right? And, and what's worked for me, uh, you know, in men's mental health, I, I think it's not taken as seriously as it probably should be. I think men, as men, we don't really take it as seriously as we should. Our own mental health, right? Our own well-being. Because if we were to take care of ourselves, we'd have a better, a greater capacity to take care of the people that we care about, Right. Uh, so this is an important topic. I want to dive right into it. That's uh, that part, that intro part that I just did right now. It wasn't planned. Uh, and what I learned going through learn, uh, reading and, and going to therapy and uh, the, the different resources that I'll get into at the very end of the video, right, uh, it was that having a formulating a plan, right, leads to more organized thoughts, right? It helps you to get stuff out. Uh, it helps you in your day-to-day -day life. It, it helps with with so many different things, right? It helps in communicating, right? I used to just shoot from the cuff, right? Shoot from the hip, right? Every single time. But now I've got notes in front of me. I'm more organized, uh, more organized to give you all the information that I've got. And, uh, and if that's still not enough, then just let me know and we can talk about it or I can figure it out. I come with receipts, right? I'm going to have links down in the description for different avenues that you can take. Some of the reading material that I'm I'm reading personally myself and some of the changes that I'm going through and some of the statistics that I'm going to be talking about because I think it's important, right? We need to take it seriously as men, right? And as a society, I think we don't take it seriously enough um, because, you know, the men are the protectors, whether you agree with that or not. Biologically and historically, they are. Right. So uh, let's take care of our let's take care of our men out there. Right. And men, what, let's let's uh, start taking care of ourselves. That way, uh, we if we start doing that, we're only going to grow better as a society. Right. Globally, locally, nationally, whatever, whatever the case may be. Right. So let's dive into it. I know it's going to be uh, I'm going to be talking about some sensitive subjects today, but to make progress, you got to be a little uncomfortable. Right. Uh, the topic today is going to be mental, men's mental health. We're going to be talking about depression. We're going to be talking about suicide, some of the challenges that men face in society. Uh, I'm probably going to take some breaks in between, uh, not breaks, not actual literal breaks, but uh, I've got some stuff to relate to probably, and, and maybe it resonates with you. I hope it does, uh, you know, and I hope it helps uh, somebody that's maybe looking for answers or maybe looking to figure out a way to start, right? Uh, so mental health. Men's mental health, the state of men's mental health in the in, in the United States specifically, but I'm pretty sure this could probably uh, this could probably can be geared towards uh, you know global globally men's mental health, right? It's in crisis across the board. I mean, there's a, I mean, a full stop right there. Uh, the first thing that that comes to mind. And what I've seen and what I've experienced personally, and I could talk about that in just a second, it's depression. I mean, depression is on the rise, especially in America. I saw it when I, when I started my, uh, my time in the United States Air Force, right? And I just saw it go, I mean, it, it grew leaps and bounds in the short, the six years that I was there. And it's, and it's continuously growing. The numbers are going up. It's, it's staggering. Like I said, the hyperlink's going to be down below, but let's go. Let's delve into this one. Uh, I think it's a little misunderstood in men, right? It doesn't come out in the way that you might think. Depression would come out, you know, where where men are sitting. Like, you've seen, I don't know, maybe commercials or, or maybe you've seen TV shows where people are just like, they're depressed, right? And they're doing this and they're doing, they're doing stuff like this. And it, it's pretty 
pretty obvious. I think we're not as uh, covert as we like to think we are, guys. All right. Um, we don't show outward emotions generally, uh, right? For the majority, I'm not saying all men, right? Because like society's changing, so that dynamics changing. But for the most part, men like to keep stuff inside. I mean, that's what we've been taught. It's what I was taught. Maybe not nowadays, but that's what's generally been taught, especially to guys my age. Uh, you know, and it manifests in the worst ways. I mean, you if you're a woman watching this, your guy, you you start talking to him, and I can I can, this is one thing that you know that I do and that I did and that I'm more conscious about now, right? I'm making a conscious effort to change this, but say your wife or your girlfriend or whoever's trying to talk to you, right? And you don't know what it is, but everything they say is getting on your last nerve, right? This could probably go for anybody, but with, with guys, it's a little more, where it's a little more apparent for the most part. It's, it's, they're saying something and your irritation level, for some reason, you don't even know what they're asking you. Hey, do you mind getting that thing over there? You're passing the remote and it irritates the crap out of you irritability. That's one thing. Um, bouts of anger, you know, maybe you have had a traumatic experience in the past. Maybe it's something, uh, personally for me, it, it was, uh, partially some traumatic experiences in the past that I hadn't dealt with. Right. And then there's a combination, all the little stuff, you know, they say little things matter and it really does. These little details, little things, they start to add up because as men, we, start, we like to compartmentalize stuff and we like to store it in the back of our heads. You know, we don't want to think about it. We don't want to confront this and, and just get it out of the way. Well, for some reason, we like to store it in. And that energy, it starts to fester and stagnate and it starts to build up and build up. And then if you haven't faced it, if you haven't just acknowledged that it's there or, or tried to get, you know, rid of it, uh, then it comes out in the worst possible ways, right? Anger, irritability, like I said. Uh, you start to feel numb emotionally towards stuff, you know, stuff doesn't matter. I mean, that's just basic, this like the, the textbook sign, signs of depression. And, um, you know, us men are bad about it, you know, and, and I've seen another thing is substance abuse. That's another thing in, in younger men and, and men that haven't, that, that, that can't find real purpose in life. They'll, 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 uh, they'll go to these, you know, they'll drink alcohol, they'll do drugs, they'll do all sorts of different things. And they, and they take a bunch of risks, unnecessary risks, like those, like those short videos and memes of, uh, you know, why women live longer than men and men are out there doing stupid stuff. Right. So, um, I'm not trying to make lie, you know, I'm not trying to make fun of I mean, every once in a while. It's nice to make fun of yourself, but you know, that's just one of the things I think about when it's just like, well, yeah, you know, it's because we, we get in our own, our own heads and we go off and do something stupid, right? Um, so, yeah, and here's a statistic right here. It's the National Institute of Mental Health. There you go. I'm going to have, like I said, the links are going to be down below. According to the Nas National Institute of Mental Health, about 6 million men in the United States suffer from depression every year. Think about that. Out of 300 some odd million Probably the number is probably higher, but think about this also. Uh, those are just the reported cases. Think about all the men that can't admit to it and they just keep it in here. I bet that number is way higher. So uh, this, there's studies showing that only one in four men who experience mental health problems seek professional support. That's exactly so. So think about that. One in four men seek uh professional support so out of the six million that are reported right maybe maybe they maybe they took that first step and all they did was report it but then they don't take any other steps to get better 25 percent do one in four so the guy the guy seeking professional help out of these six million men it's not much that's what one and a half million out of those six million that are reported. You get what I'm saying, right? Um, there's still a stigma about it too. You know, men, like I said, when I was growing up, you had to be tough. Suck it up, buttercup, right? Don't cry. 
Why are you crying? I'm sure you've heard that before. Uh, and we kind of have to, you know, while that is true in some cases for something small, it makes no sense, right? But for other stuff, you know, it's like, no, some of that stuff, you need to get it. You need to deal with it, get it out. Or like I said earlier, it's going to sit there and it's going to come out and it's not going to be good. It's not going to be good for your wife or your kids or your, or anybody in, in a relationship that you're with or, or your family. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it can get pretty bad. And I'm, I'm telling you, I'm speaking from experience here, right? Uh, but when you make a conscious effort to kick those habits, to, to face them, it's all worth it. It's all worth it. So we're going to move on to suicide here. All right, this is a big one. I know if, if you're sensitive to this kind of subject, then maybe uh, you can move on to another video or whatever. But if you want to know some stuff, here we go. Uh, this, you know, it's a sensitive subject for me. And I'll get into I'll get into the, the weeds in just a second. Suicide rates among men are shockingly high. And here's the shock factor. In fact, men are about 3.88 times more likely to die by suicide than women are. 3.88 times more likely. That's wild. Let me hit you with another one. In the U.S., the men account for about 80% of all suicide deaths. Isn't that crazy? Think about in any of the suicides you hear about, 80% are, are, are men. They've lost purpose. It's insane. I, 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 the highest risk group is middle-aged men. Maybe they've been in a marriage their whole life. They don't know what to do. Or maybe their wife left them. Or, or maybe they, lost their, they just lost their job. They lost their pension. You know, they don't, but see, they don't go, they, they, let's go back to the depression. Only 6 million are reported. So these, these men, and these are their middle-aged men, they probably haven't dealt with anything. So all that stuff festers and then they feel useless. Mm. Golly. Suicide is the second leading cause of death for men under the age of 45. The second leading cause. And that number is probably only going to go up with social media and, and all. Social media is a big one. Social media is a huge one. I think that social media, it's bad for men and women. Because I think social media really, in my opinion, adds more to the the women's percentage because of self-image and stuff like that. Uh, there are more highly influential female women or females than males. Um, I'd have to get that statistic for you, but I was, I was just thinking about that right now. I mean, because with everything is at your fingertips, right? Everything's right here. And you're constantly on your phone watching all that stuff. And then you, then you start being self-conscious about yourself, about how you look, how the world perceives you and stuff. And it's, I, I don't, I don't know. It, it's a crazy, it's a crazy thing to think about when you really step back from the outside looking in and you think about how long you spend looking at TikTok and Facebook and, and Instagram and, and, uh, things of the sort. And then think about how, how you compare yourself, right? Subconsciously, maybe even how many comments you make in your head regarding whatever they're saying or comparing yourself or something, or, hey, look, they look like they're living the best life. I wish I could live that life, right? It just shows how far we've come as, as, as or how far we haven't gone as a society to, to do that to ourselves, to basically torture yourself like that, right? To bring your self-esteem down, self-esteem down. It's, it's insane. We don't want to, as men, we don't really, me personally, and this is speaking for me, and I'm pretty sure the majority, we don't want to bring you know, we don't want to bring people down with our moods and stuff half of the time. That's why we don't really talk about it. That's, that's another thing that adds on to it. That's just another layer to the quote unquote, to the, to the onion, you know, and getting this stuff out, it's, it's paramount. It's paramount to us, uh, being the best versions of ourselves that we can be right, man. But, uh, Societal pressures. Let's talk about that. And that's, that's, that's a great segue into this, right? Uh, we can't ignore societal pressures that men face today. Uh, men face silent crisis, right? Traditional roles that we once occupied, and this is going back 
women are ta- are taking charge more and more in certain roles. You know, men are the workhorse for the most part. You know, you think about um, waste management. You think about construction. You think about the guys that go up and fix the electrical for your home, right? They're going to be occupied more. The more physical roles are going to be occupied by men. So that's uh, that's something crazy. You know, like Mike Rowe goes out there and he, I think he really drives it home with his dirty jobs, right? Really just shows you the importance and not, and I'm not, we're not, I'm not trying to just pat men on the back here, right? I'm not saying that I'm not taken away from women having more power and, and, and going and having a higher percentage of higher education when more, there are more women in higher education than there are men and that graduate. But I think men as, as a whole have just really lost purpose, right? I think sometimes we'll see what's on the news or we'll see what society's talking about men and you can look at it. It's really not all that good, right? I think we've been painted as villains sometimes and that, and we feel it, you know, we, we got, we've got feelings too, you know what I mean? Um, but there's, there's just a, there's just a huge decline in men's self-esteem and self-worth and stuff. And I think we need to dig ourselves out of it. Right. So I'm not saying any of this because, you know, I, I think society's bad and I'm going to paint women in society in this bad light. That's not what this is all about. All right. I think men need to take a real good, hard look and acknowledge from the outside in, right? Cause that's where it starts. It starts on the inside acknowledging that you have an issue, right? Acknowledging that something's going on and then trying to figure it out. That's what men do, right? We're, we're good problem solvers and we can figure it out. And if you think that you can't, well, you can. If you think that you can't, you've already lost, right? But if you have the intent of fixing it to be, to be the version of you that you know that you can be and contribute again, then you're going to make it. You're going to be able to do it, right? Um, we're going to close this one off here by, I'm going, to, I'm going to go back to this suicide note for just a second. I know I talked about being organized, but I, I, it just occurred to me right now. I'm sure a lot of people have seen or heard of somebody that's committed suicide and stuff. And, and my own, in my own personal experience, uh, like I said, I was in the Air Force. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to name anybody. All right. This is just, and, and my Air Force buddies watching this, they, they can, they'll know, they'll know who I'm talking about. So there was a Sergeant that we knew, and this was within the first, like maybe within the first year that I was in and his, his wife had filed for divorce, right? I don't know. We don't know his situation before all that transpired, but he ended up and and there was no indication. He didn't talk to really anybody about it. There was no indication. It it just came out of nowhere. So he, he ended up taking the lives of his family, his, his wife, and then he turned the gun on himself and he killed himself. And I'm not saying that to bring the mood down, right? It's just, it is what it is. Serious business, your mental health and your mental well-being, fellas, I can't stress it enough, right? Um, but if he had talked to somebody, right, if he had, if he was able to get it out and find help, that could have been avoided. It could have been avoided. I get a little choked up thinking about it. I don't think about it every day, but when I do think about it, it, it hits home because, you know, he played a, a big role in my life as I was coming up in the ranks uh, in the Air Force. In my journey, I've made a lot of mistakes. You know, I, I would tell myself I'd start and then I would pull back as soon as it got hard, right? Or as soon as something didn't go the way that I thought it was going to go, right? Or if I doubted myself, um, I would pull back and I would regress. But to make progress... Nobody ever made progress easy. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be uncomfortable coming out of the shell like I'm doing and like I have. It's going to be uncomfortable, but you have to face it. That's how you grow, 
I, I haven't heard of anybody that's grown that hasn't been uncomfortable, right? So we need to normalize seeking help for men, right? That's the first thing. We'll summarize this. Normalize seeking help for men, right? And men admitting that they need some help, right? We're not invincible. I wish we were, but we're not. We can be as invincible as we possibly can be until we're not. Uh, we need to educate some of these other people that maybe, you know, maybe doubt the statistics or maybe doubt that men really need help. Because, you know, if you if you think you're immune or if somebody else thinks that you're weak or this and that, you're not. Don't listen. That's don't listen to them. They don't know what they're talking about. All right. You can do it. In fact, it's necessary. It's necessary. If you really put your, if you really delve deep enough, you'll, there's going to be something that you'll find that you're going to be like, should probably, should probably resolve this before it gets out of hand. It's been sitting there a little too long, right? I've been making excuses because of this, right? I'm going to have links down in the description. This has been great. I, I'm, I'm passionate about this. This is what I've been doing for a little while for a while actually on and off and then recently I've really you go in with the intent to change to make yourself better to raise your self-esteem your self-confidence and 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 your respect for yourself and that's going to you other people are going to feel it they're 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 going to sense it they're going to see it right so Everything's going to be down in the description. Let me know how I did. And if you've got a husband or a boyfriend or somebody that's going through the same thing that may need some help or somebody to talk to, show them the video and talk to me. It's not a big deal. I just want to tell you I'm not a licensed therapist or anything. I'm not here to fix everybody's problems or anything, but this is just my journey. All right. I'm here. I'm hope I hope this helps. And like I said, everything's going to be down in the description. Go check it out if you don't believe me. Right. Or let's open a conversation. Let me know what else you want to talk about or that you want me to talk about, right? Um, but yeah, this has been a lot of fun, all right? Remember, next time you you know, you know have a guy that you care about or your bro or your husband or, or whatever the case may be, your brother, you know, ask them how they're doing, right? Just tell them that you're checking in on them, that you love them, that you care about them. Sometimes that's all we want, right? All right, fellas, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This has been a blast making. I've had a lot of fun, and I'm, I'm looking forward to the next one. I've got more in store for y'all. Um, I'm going to be adding also to my pilot training here pretty soon, so make sure you keep an eye on the channel for that. And, you know, just be kind to each other, everybody. Just be kind. This is Jake here at Whatever. See you next time.